ती स्थापकाय चर्मस्वरूपिणे स्थापकाय चर्मस्वरूपिणे अवतार वरिष्ठा रामकृष्णा ते नम असतो मद्गमय तमसो मोतिर्गमय मृत्योरमृत शांति 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 let us offer our salutations to shri ramakrishna the embodiment of all religions the supreme god incarnate who came to establish universal religion let us pray to him to lead us from the unreal to the real to lead us from the darkness of ignorance to the light of knowledge to lead us from death to immortality we have been studying gospel of shri ramakrishna last time i have started the topic great teachings in the last class we studied about the danger of anger and greed we have to reform ourselves in order to experience real peace and happiness in human life it is possible only we have to be very earnest in our spiritual practices same topic i am continuing in this class also great teachings mostly we are all clinging to things and objects of the world we cling to people develop attachment then it will be very difficult for us to really experience pure happiness in life in order to reach the abode of god which is the abode of peace and bliss we have to be free from clinging to things objects and people because mind is locked up going in different directions so we are unable to really appreciate the glory of peace and happiness it's only in human life we have to achieve that goal but in order to do spiritual practices we must have clear conviction about spiritual ideas and we must pursue the spiritual path persistently never stop doing sadhana until you reach the 
goal. Stop not till the goal is reached. And it is very true. You have to be concentrated, focused, earnest in your spiritual path. Sri Ramakrishna says in the Gospel, no spiritual progress is possible without the renunciation of lust and gold. Lust and gold, they are the main culprits to take away all our peace and joy. Sri Ramakrishna said, I renounce these three, land, wife and wealth. Sri Ramakrishna said further, once I went to the registry office to register some land, the title of which was in the name of Raghuvir. Raghuvir is the, Raghuvir is the deity's name. The officer asked me to sign my name, but I didn't do it because I couldn't feel that it was my land. I was shown much respect as the Guru of Keshav Chandra Sen. They presented me with mangoes, but I could not carry them home. How can one expect to attain God without renunciation? Sri Ramakrishna gives a very uh, vivid example to clarify this point. Suppose one thing is placed upon another. How can you get this second without removing the first? So, one must pray to God without any selfish desire. But, since we are worshipping God, eventually, if it is practiced with perseverance, it is gradually turned into selfless worship. Selfish worship with the idea of satisfying the desire transforms itself into selfless worship. And there is a great example. The great devotee Dhruva practiced austerity. He practiced tapas. He practiced concentration and breath control. Why? To obtain his kingdom. It is a selfish desire, no doubt. It is with this desire Dhruva meditated on God. But at last, what happened? When he realized God, his whole outlook was changed. When he saw the Divine being in front of him, all this idea of enjoying kingdom, etc. vanished away from his mind. And he says, O oh Lord, after reaching you, after seeing you, I got fulfillment. I desire nothing. The whole thing is in you. I want only devotion. 
and love towards you. And of course, Sri Ramakrishna said further, though Dhruva asked because of the state of purity in his mind, the Divine Lord himself said, very good, I acknowledge your true devotion towards me, but now you rule the kingdom not because of yourself, but because of me. I am appointing you as my representative to rule the kingdom. It makes much difference. In this way, he doesn't have any feeling that I am the doer. He always feels I am doing according to the directions of the Divine Supreme. I am just an instrument. See how that whole outlook was transformed. Though initially he had desire to enjoy kingdom, but finally he didn't want any such thing. Before seeing the vision of God, all other things are really insignificant. And Dhruva said, very significant statement, he said, Why should a man give up gold if he gets it while searching for glass beads? Getting gold means seeing God is equal to getting gold. Very significant statement. It is true that people try to do spiritual practices, but there is no grit in their devotions. All lukewarm, half-hearted sadhanas. Sri Ramakrishna says, worldly people lack perseverance. The spiritual wisdom of worldly people is seen only on rare occasions. It is like the flame of a candle. No, it is rather like a single ray of the sun passing through a chink in a wall. Worldly people chant the name of God, but there is no zeal behind it. It is like children swearing by God, having learnt the word from the quarrels of their aunts. Worldly people, that is, people whose mind are absorbed in worldly things, worldly affairs. They have no grit. If they succeed in an undertaking, it's all right. But if they don't succeed, it scarcely bothers them at all. When they need water, they begin to dig a well. But as soon as they strike a stone, they give up digging there and begin at another place. Perhaps they come to a bed of sand, finding nothing but sand, they give that place up too. How can they succeed in getting water unless they continue to dig persistently where they started? So Sri Ramakrishna is emphasizing persistence, perseverance is very essential in spiritual path. Man reaps the harvest of his own past actions. 
Hence you read in this song, Oh Mother, I have no one else to blame. Alas, I sink in the well these very hands have dug. I and mine, that is ignorance. By discriminating, you will realize that what you call I, capital I, is really nothing but Atman. Reason it out. Are you the body or the flesh or something else? At the end you will know that you are none of these. You are free from attributes. Then you will realize that you have never been the doer of any action and that you have been free from virtue and faults alike and that you are beyond righteousness and unrighteousness. What is ignorance? From ignorance, a person says, this is gold and this is brass. But a person of knowledge says, it's all gold. What do you first do when you learn to swim? You make mistakes. Nobody will be able to swim at the outset. You make mistakes, more mistakes. When you have made all the mistakes you possibly can without drowning and some of them many times more, many times over they do. What do you find? That you can swim. Well, life is just the same as learning to swim. A constant practicing swimming, finally he is able to swim properly without drowning. Life is just the same as learning to swim. Do not be afraid of making mistakes. For there is no other way of learning how to live. You have to learn through mistakes, through mistakes. The child learns to walk by falling. You can see any child, he stumbles before he is able to walk properly. But he is able to walk properly because of persistence. Continuously the child tries to stand up and walk, stand up and walk. It's not tired. So the most essential factor is persistence. The determination never to allow your energy or enthusiasm to be dampened by the discouragement that must inevitably come. Permanence, perseverance and persistence in spite of all obstacles, discouragement and impossibilities. It is this that in all things distinguishes the strong soul from the weak. It is said, Edison failed 10,000 times before he made the electric light. 10,000 times. Do not be discouraged if you fail a few times. Great lesson, great teaching. Swami Vivekananda in the course of his uh, talks in America, he told this story. There was a great sage, Narad. He was a great yogi, a very good yogi and a very great saint. He could go anywhere 
because of his yogic powers. His mission was to help the people in a very possible way. One day, Narad was passing through a forest. He saw a man who had been meditating until the white ants had built a huge mound round his body. So long had he been sitting in that position. So this person saw Narad and it provoked him to ask him, Sir, where are you going? Narad replied, I am going to heaven. Then this man immediately said, Sir, please ask God when he will be merciful to me, when I shall attain freedom. Very good. Then Narad went further. He saw another man, but he is doing practice in a different way. He was jumping about, singing, dancing, singing the glories of God. He also asked the same question. Narad, where are you going? His voice and his gestures were wild. Narad said, I am going to heaven. Then please ask God when I shall be free. Narada went on. This story is told by Vivekananda. Narada went on. In the course of time, he came again by the same road and there was a man who had been meditating with the ant hill around him. He was very joyous to see Narad coming towards him. With great anxiety he asked, Narad, did you ask the Lord about me? Oh yeah. What did he say? The Lord told me that you would attain freedom in four more births. That means he has to struggle for four more births. The man began to weep and wail and said, I have meditated until an antil has grown around me and I have four more births yet. He was so much disheartened. Narada went to the other man. The other man also was very anxious to know the result. Sir, did you ask me a question? Oh, yeah. What did he say? Yeah, he said like this. Do you see this tamarind tree there? I have to tell you that as many leaves as there are on that tree, so many times you shall be born and then you shall attain freedom. Tamarind tree is famous for full of leaves, millions of leaves. That means this poor guy has to take millions of births. That's the year. But what was his reaction? He did not weep and wail like uh, the other one. On the other hand, he began to dance with great joy and said, very good, I shall have freedom after such a short time. Immediately he heard a voice, my child, you will have freedom this minute. That was the reward for his perseverance. He was ready to work through all those births. Nothing discouraged him. But the first man felt that even four more births were too long. Only perseverance, like that of the man who was willing to wait years and years, brings about the highest result. 
and there is a common story which you all know the story of turtle and the rabbit that had a race the rabbit thought he could win easily so he took a nap on the way but the turtle finally won because he did not give up and the story is also common story it tells of a little train that had to climb to a climb a steep hill the hill was so steep that the little train had a hard time trying to get over it but the train just kept pulling all the while saying i think i can i think i can the train when goes up it makes a sound you know at last the train was over the top of the hill i thought i could i thought i could chakra the happy little train a journey to the abode of death requires a lot of wisdom and perseverance there is a famous story of princess savitri she was with her husband when yama the god of death came to fetch him because ice was over so he came to take him to his region savitri was very pure and modest wife she pleaded with yama until he was impressed with her and offered her a boon she wished for her father in law's throne to be restored to him yama granted the wish but savitri continued to follow him as they approached the gates of yama's kingdom yama commanded savitri to turn back for no living man was allowed within his kingdom she again refused saying she was not a man she was a woman yama said no living man was allowed so immediately she said like this impressed by both her courage and wisdom yama offered her a second wish this time savitri asked for her husband's life to be restored and again the wish was granted when years later both savitri and her husband did die the story says they were greeted by yama as good friends there is a story of arjun in the mahabharat <coughs> the pandava princes they were getting training from dronacharya drona was very well versed in ancient scriptures vedas and upanishads as well as in practices of yoga and meditation besides he was adept in various martial and other arts useful in war time drona acharya was the supreme authority on training his disciples in the art of archery out of all pandavas and kauravas arjun had immense liking for the sport of bow and arrow he practiced this art with great concentration and perseverance soon he became number 1 in this art dronacharya was greatly pleased with arjun and naturally showed preferential love and favor towards him this caused a natural adolescence jealousy in the heart of duryodhan 
and his brother Dushasan. Duryodhan in particular did not like Arjun and other Pandavas and silently ill feelings like hatred towards Pandavas took birth in his heart. One day Duryodhana and others they openly criticized their Guru for favor shown towards Arjun telling him they also were not less skillful in archery. As a reply to their criticism, Dronacharya arranged a test to decide the best archer amongst everyone. Accordingly, a wooden bird was put on a branch of a distant tree. It was partly hidden by the foliage. A prominent artificial eye was painted on the wooden bird. The teacher called all his disciples and said, Look, a bird is sitting on that far off tree. You have to hit the arrow exactly in its eye. Are you ready? Everyone nodded. First the eldest Yudhishthira was invited to try his skill. He stretched his bowstring and was about to release the arrow when Dronacharya asked him a question. Yudhishthira, may I know what is visible to you at this point of time? Yudhishthira replied innocently, Why? I am seeing you, the tree, people around me and the bird. Similar questions were put to Duryodhan, Bhima, Nakul, Sadev and others. And Asari Drona got the similar answers as those given by Yudhishthir. Acharya disqualified them. He asked them to step aside as it was obvious that with such poor concentration they were sure to miss the target. Finally, it was a turn of Arjun. He readied himself, his bow and arrow in perfect graceful harmony. When the Guru asked him, Arjun, will you tell me what is being observed by you? Arjun replied, Sir, at this point of time, only the eye of the bird is visible to me. When asked by the teacher whether he was able to see the bird, the tree, the people around, Arjun replied in negative, maintaining that he saw the eye of the bird only. That means his whole focus was completely on the eye of the bird. Dronacharya was immensely pleased with Arjun's tremendous concentration and correct approach towards the art of archery. He then explained to others how due to such peculiar yogic qualities and powers he preferred Arjun as his best disciple. There is another story which all of you know probably. Bruce and the spider. Several years ago there was a king of Scotland and his name was Robert de Bruce. It was a good thing that he was both brave and wise because the times in which he lived were wild and dangerous. The king of England was at war with him and had led a great army into Scotland to drive him out of the land and to make Scotland a part of England. Battle after battle he had fought with England. Six times Robert the Bruce had led this brave little army against his enemies. Six times his men had been beaten until finally they were driven out into flight. At last, the army of Scotland was entirely scattered and the king was forced to hide in the woods and in lonely places among the mountains. One rainy day, Robert de Bruce lay in a cave, listening to the rainfall outside the cave entrance. He was tired and felt sick at heart. 
ready to give up all hope it seemed to him there was no use for him to try to do anything more as he lay thinking he noticed a spider over his head getting ready to weave her web he watched her as she worked slowly and with great care six times she tried to throw her thread from one edge of the cave wall to another six times her thread fell short poor thing said robert de bruce you too know what it is like to fail six times in a row but the spider the spider did not lose hope with still more care she made ready to try for a seventh time robert de bruce almost forgot his own troubles as he watched fascinated she swung herself out upon the slender line would she fall again no the thread was carried safely to the cave wall and fastened there yes cried bruce i too will try a seventh time so he arose and called his men together he told them of his plans and sent them out with hopeful messages to cheer the discouraged people soon there was an army of brave men around him a seventh battle was fought and this time the king of england was forced to retreat back to his own country it was not long before england recognized scotland as an independent country with robert de bruce as its rightful king and to this very day the victory and independence of scotland is traced to a spider who kept trying again and again to spin her web in a cave and inspired the king of scotland robert de bruce so one who perseveres will certainly succeed shri ramakrishna was talking to actor he said you asked me about self realization longing is the means of realizing atman a man must strive to attain god with all his body with all his mind and with all his speech because of an excess of bile one gets jaundice then one sees everything as yellow one perceives no color but yellow among you actors those who take only the roles of women acquire the nature of a woman by thinking of women your ways and thoughts become womanly just so by thinking day and night of god one acquires the nature of god the mind is like white linen just returned from the laundry it takes on the color you dip it in actor said but it must first be sent to the laundry sri ramakrishna said yes first is the purification of the mind afterwards if you direct the mind to the contemplation of god it will be colored by god consciousness again if you direct the mind to worldly duties such as the acting of a play it will be colored by worldliness master said to the brahmos dive deep learn to love god plunge into divine love you see i have heard how you pray why do you brahmos dwell so much on the glories of god is there such great need of your saying over and over again o oh god you have created this sky the great oceans the lunar world the solar world and stellar world everybody is wonderstruck at the mere sight of a rich man's garden rich man's garden house people become speechless at the sight of the trees the flowers the ponds the drawing room the pictures but alas how few are they who seek the owner of all these only one or two inquire after him he who seeks god with a longing heart can see him talk to him as i am talking to you believe my words when i say that god can be seen but are to whom am i saying these words who will believe me can one find god in these sacred books by reading the scriptures one may feel at the most that god exists but god does not reveal himself to a man 
unless he himself dives deep only after such a plunge after the revelation of god through his grace he is once doubt destroyed you may read scriptures by the thousands and recite thousands of texts but unless you plunge into god with yearning of heart you will not comprehend him by mere scholarship you may fool man but not god scriptures and books what can one achieve with this alone nothing can be realized without his grace strive strive with a longing heart for his grace through his grace you will see him and he will talk to you so you must persevere in your spiritual practices and there is a great story of vishwamitra how the king became rajashi and finally brahmashi but in order to achieve that goal how much he has to undergo austerities how much hurdles come on his way he was tempted by divine damsels menaka and ramba he failed one or two times but then he did not give up his practice he did continue his austerities more vigorously and more vigorously he persevered till he became brahmarshi so we should understand that perseverance is very essential in our spiritual practices very essential never dilute the sadhana which you are doing do it earnestly devotedly lovingly persevere you will reach the goal stop not till the goal is reached page 999 prasanna said now you are saying that there is a god he is telling to narendra again it is you who say that according to charvaka and many other thinkers the world was self created narendra said haven't you studied chemistry who combines the different elements is a human hand that combines hydrogen oxygen and electricity to prepare water everybody admits the existence of the intelligent force a force that is the essence of knowledge and that guides all these phenomena prasanna asked how are we to know that god is kind narendra said the vedas say that which is the compassionate face john stuart mill said the same thing he said how much kindness must he have who has implanted kindness in the hearts of men the master used to say faith is the one essential thing god exists he is very near us through faith alone one sees him narendra sang where are you seeking me my servant i am very close to you far away you still are seeking do i am so very near i am not in skin or hair i am not in bones or flesh not in mask and not in temple not in kashi or kailas never will you come on me in ayodhya or dwarka but you will be sure to find me if you search where faith abides not in present tasks or yoga not in vairagya or sanyas yet i come without delaying if you only search for me prasanna said sometimes you say that god doesn't exist and now you are saying all these things you are not consistent you keep changing your up opinions all left narendra said all right 
I shall never change what I have just said. As long as one has desires and cravings, so long one doubts the existence of God. A man cherishes some desire or other, perhaps he has a desire to study or pass the university examination, or become a scholar, and so forth and on, and so on. Narendra sang again in a voice choked with emotion. Hail to thee, our God and Lord. Hail, giver of every blessing. Hail, thou giver of good, O redeemer from fear, from danger and suffering, upholder of the worlds. Hail, Lord, victory to thee, unfathomable and infinite, immeasurable beyond compare. O God, none equals thee, Lord of the universe, O all-pervading truth. Thou the Atman Supreme, hail, O Lord, victory to thee, O thou the all-compassionate one, adored by the whole universe, I bow before thy feet. Thou art the only refuge in life and death, O Lord, before thy feet I bow. Hail, Lord, victory to thee. This is our only prayer, O Lord, what other boon can we implore? Thus do we pray to thee, grant us true wisdom here and in the life hereafter. Reveal thyself to us. Hail, Lord, victory to thee. We shall stop here. Chant the name of the Lord and his glory unceasingly, that the mirror of the heart may be wiped clean and quench that mighty forest fire, worldly lust raging furiously within. O name, stream down in moonlight on the lotus heart. Opening its cup to knowledge of thyself, O self, drowned deep in the waves of his bliss, Tasting his nectar at every step, bathing in his name, that both for various souls. Various are thy names, O Lord, in each and every name thy power resides. No times are set, no rites are needful for chanting of thy name. So vast is thy mercy, how huge then is my wretchedness, who find in this empty life and heart no devotion to thy name. O my mind be humbler than a blade of grass. Be patient and forbearing like a tree. Take no honor to thyself. Give honor to all. Chant unceasingly the name of the Lord. O Lord and soul of the universe, mine is no prayer for wealth or retinue. The playthings of lust or the ties of fame. As many times I say may be reborn. Grant me, O Lord, a such fast love for thee. A drowning man in this world's fearful ocean is thy servant, O sweet one. In thy mercy consider him as just beneath thy feet. Ah, how I long for the day. When an instant separation from the old Lord will be as a thousand years, when my heart burns with his desire, and the wall without thee is a heartless void. Prostrate at thy feet let me be, in unwavering devotion, neither imploring the embrace of thine arms, nor bewailing the withdrawal of thy presence, though it tears my soul asunder. O thou who still hast the hearts of the devotees, do with me what thou wilt, for thou art my heart's beloved, thou and thou alone. O Lord, lead us from the unreal to the real, lead us from darkness to light, and lead us from death to immortality. May all be free from dangers, may all realize what is good, may all be actual by noble thoughts, may all rejoice everywhere, may all be happy, may all be free from disease, may all realize what is good, may none be subject to misery. May the wicked become virtuous, may the virtuous attain tranquility, may the tranquil be free from bonds, may the freed make others free. May good bread all people, May the sovereign righteously rule the earth. May all beings ever attain what is good. May the worlds be prosperous and happy. May the clouds pour in in time. May the earth be blessed with crops. May all countries be free from calamity. May holy men live without fear. May the Lord, the destroyer of sins, the presiding deity of all sacred works be satisfied. For he being pleased, the whole universe becomes pleased. He being satisfied, the whole universe feels satisfied. <coughs> 